Hello there, welcome to Meridian and a look back on our first year. Well, tonight's programme comes to you from our headquarters in Southampton, but over the course of the next hour, we'll be travelling right across our home region of the South and Southeast, and indeed around the world as well. Because on this, the second day of the new year, we thought it was a good time to pause for a little while and look back on some of the programmes which we believe, and we hope you agree, have been the highlights of a really exciting maiden voyage. Blue right doors. now, my colleagues in the newsroom here in Southampton and in our other centres at Newbury and Maidstone are busy working on the stories that will make tonight's bulletin. News test traffic. While their minds are concentrated on today, Chief Executive Roger Lawton and his senior management team are focusing their thoughts on tomorrow. We shall be meeting more of the people who make the programmes a little bit later. But while they're working on the present and indeed the future, let us start with a brief glimpse of the past. I was born ITV first came to the region in 1958 when Southern Television began broadcasting from the converted Plaza Cinema here on the banks of the River Itchen in Northern. In 1980, after 22 years of broadcasting, Southern lost their franchise and for the next 12 years, the region was served by TVS. In November 1991, the franchise was awarded to Meridian and while TBS prepared to say goodbye, Meridian were planning the dawn of a new era. Happy New Year as you join Meridian live from Winchester Cathedral. Hello, I'm Debbie Thrower and welcome to 1993 and a double celebration. This magnificent cathedral was completed 900 years ago this year. And your new ITV station, Meridian, has been on air now for a little over nine seconds. And 12 months and one day further on, here she is looking better than ever. I wish I knew what the secret was. Debbie Thrower. Oh, thank you, Fred. It has been a good year, actually. It's been it? a very good year and a very happy year, isn't it? And I think better than we dared hope, if we're brutally honest about yes, it. Yes, if we're going to be brutally honest. <laughs> and as nice as it is to be warm and dry in the studio, I think one of the nicest things about the past year has been being able to get out, meet people in the region and make some good features. You're absolutely right. And we've been in good company, as we can see now, as we join some of Meridian's men and women out and about. Welcome to a special edition of the pier, coming to you from Dover, where they don't in fact seem to have a pier, but where they are extremely well equipped in the castle department. Coming up in tonight's show, James Bond. There's a wolf by the kill. horsepower, two tracks, 14 wheels, and no tax, tank insurance, or MOT. They shot film in Louise up there. A film about people driving an open car across America. Who on earth would want to see that? If you were running Meridian for this region, how would you improve it? What sort of programs would you put on? Uh, well, more comedy for a start. Well, Michael Palin and Meridian took note of what you said, and the first thing we tried to do was appeal to your sense of humour. Michael Palin starred alongside Tracy Ullman in one of Meridian's first network comedy shows, appropriately entitled A Class Act. A playground in London. And being a playground, it contains a group of children who are playing together. But look closer. Something is special about them. They are from very different backgrounds. Kelly, Timothy, 
and Peter. These young children are the teachers, the executives, the bus drivers, and the prisoners on remand of the future. This program follows their lives. Give me a child until he is seven, and I will show you a seven-year-old child. The comedy writing class act of Dick Clement and Ian Lafrenet also opened Meridian's comedy drama season with a network series, Full Stretch. What are you doing here, Baza? I've taken care of it. It's your client I'm concerned with. Isn't he back at his hotel? No, he's not. I checked. He's not registered under his own name, you know. He isn't. No, he's under a, what you call, a, a pseudonym. Only I've forgotten what it is. Well, let's hope that's it, then. I had nightmares about this on the way over. I saw this tow truck on the move. Mr. Barry wakes up, steps out and breaks both legs in Oxford Street. Jesus! I've already got one lawsuit pending. What were you thinking of? If I'd gone to Selfridges after the hotel, they might have closed. As I was passing and he was asleep. How long have you worked for me? A few weeks. Long enough to know. Long enough to know. You always put the client first. Didn't I drum this into you? And this is not some one-off. This is not some proud new dad splashing out on the baby's first ride home. This is international rock star with all that implies. Well, we don't seem to have scratched the paintwork. It's amazing, because they don't worry. And a ticket on top of the fine hatch. Diabolical, that is. He's still here, Bat. What? He slipped through all that. He's not on anything, is he? No. No, he was shattered up all night in the studio. We might just get away with this. Off you go. Drive carefully. Well, isn't he going to wonder why it took him three hours to get from Wembley to St James's? Burst water main in Cricklewood. Regional viewers found plenty to laugh about in Brighton, the home base for the comedy programme Laughing Gas. Hello. Hello. Hey, I, I, was, I went down the lanes. Went down the lanes today. Look at all, all the antique shops in the lanes, and I saw a dinky toy, a 1965 Lady Penelope car dinky toy, right, unplayed with in the box. Where did that come from? Posh kids. <laughs> Posh kids from Hove. <laughs> they get them, right? They get them for Christmas and go, no, I won't open it. I'll keep it as a future investment. <laughs> But the sense of humour wasn't confined to the comedy department. We found plenty to smile about in other programmes that reflected the lives and characters of the Meridian region. In our series True But Strange, Maidstone presenter Mike Debbins might even have walked down the street where you live. Could be anywhere, couldn't it? Any street in any town anywhere in Britain. Net curtains at every window notice and everyone sort of keeping up appearances and being respectable for the benefit of the neighbours. But what's happening the other side of those net curtains? What sort of world is there? Are there eccentrics, enthusiasts, people with all sorts of passions that they're trying to live out in their lives? Are the mad dogs and the Englishmen alive and well and living in these streets nowadays? Well, the answer seems to be yes. Mike Debbins met part-time belly dancers in Tunbridge. Ordinary folk dressed up as extraordinary cowboys in West Kingsdown. Robin from Tunbridge and his collection of Mr. Men. Eric from Folkestone, whose giant cinema organ filled his home, but was sweet music to the ears of his wife. But it was a different story for Antoinette from Margate, because kind-hearted Antoinette is leading a dog's life. Licking his chops and weighing me up for tea. I'm a guy who don't scare easily. That's the truth. Go oh, look at that tooth. Antoinette shares her home with 64 chihuahuas. <laughs> So many of them. Well, what happened was that originally I started, obviously, like everyone does, with one. Then it was two. Then they mated. And there were three. And I always found an excuse as to why I should sell this one because it's red. Now this one because it's all black. Or uh... This one because it's tiny. 
and I've end, I've ended up with as many as these. Do they all have names? Yes, they do. Who's this? That's Amigo. Amigo? Yes. Uh -huh. Who else have we got? That's Givenchy. Givenchy? Oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a posh name. Very, very. While Antoinette was remembering 64 names of 64 chihuahuas in Margate, Toya Wilcox was touring the region in the series A Tale of Four Cities. In Salisbury, she caught up with a famous name with a famous face, local resident and former Prime Minister Sir Edward Heath. Very good market. I like walking around the market on a Saturday morning. Oh, it's wonderful. Seeing everybody there. We were there this morning. The people, well, the people were just magnificent. Yeah. Well, two dear ladies walked up to me the other day and looked and then stopped and then chatted to each other. Then they looked again and they said, yes, it is. And uh, they said, uh, so nice to see you here, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> right, we'll take a break, but there's lots more still to come that will appeal to those of you with a sense of humour and also those blessed with a strong sense of drama and adventure. The Texas end-of-year sellout ends 8 p.m. Tuesday. To ensure all surplus stocks are sold, we're knocking an instant 10% off all end-of-range prices at the checkout. And there's an extra 10% off many items already reduced. Don't miss it. The Texas end-of-year sellout ends 8 p.m. Tuesday. Could it be? Yes, it could. The Musicals Collection brings you all the great shows at a truly great price. $3.99 from your newsagent. All the great songs. All the great performances. Glimpses behind the scenes. The Musicals Collection. Each fortnightly issue on CD or cassette with a lavish publication. Issue 1, West Side Story, is only 99p. Rice, they say, is the stuff of life. So for a more interesting life, you must have more interesting rice. And these amazing new Knorr cubes for rice hold the secret. Simply add one to the water, cook the rice as normal, and you'll soon have delicious pillow rice. So discover the meaning of rice. Knorr, they've got the Knorr. Citroen ZX elegantly combines space with performance. Its blend of road holding and comfort is nothing less than a revelation. Citroen ZX. Discover what Citroen can do for you. Got a cough. <coughs> v knows is all you need to know. <sighs> if the way you are right now isn't how you want to be, you can change the way you look, change the way you feel. If you want to lose weight, it has to be Weight Watchers. So start losing weight right now with Weight Watchers New Kickstart Plus. For January only, registration's free. So join now and save nine pounds. For your nearest meeting, phone 0703 639 951 or see Yellow Pages. You can change. Good evening, Meridian Broadcasting. Well, Meridian has been critically acclaimed for its two-hour ITV dramatisation of Mary Wesley's Harnessing Peacocks, and we'll be having a glimpse of that a little bit later. Before that, though, I'd like you to meet a young filmmaker who's already taken the first steps on what looks to be a highly successful film career. 
His name is Dean Baker. He's from Christchurch, and he won the competition for first-time student filmmakers in our program, Ready When You Are. And Dean, it certainly got you off to a flying start, didn't it? It certainly did. Um, as a result of that, I managed to get three commercials which were made at around 60,000. And recently, I think it was actually last week, I did a promo for the Cocteau Twins, which was about 70-odd thousand. Not bad. And you Not were bad. a student where? Bournemouth Film School. So, big budgets now. What was your budget, though, for the film that won you the competition? £400. £400 well spent, as we can see now. Ready when you are, Mr Baker. I offer you your life. How generous. And all I can offer you is this. <laughs> Terrific. And all I can say is all the very best in the future. Thank you very much. And nice to meet you. And who knows, one day we might see this young man back in the area again, producing, directing maybe, an epic like Harnessing Peacocks. It's won acclaim worldwide, but it was actually shot on location here in the south of England. Who's that girl? Her name's Hebe. Hebe. A virgin crowned with flowers daughter of Jupiter and Juno. Speciality was harnessing peacocks. And what are you doing here? I was fishing. I can't do it for nothing. I have to earn my living. And I'm afraid I'm rather expensive. But the first time will be a free trial to see whether I'm happy with you. I don't have a father. My mother is a hermaphrodite, and you are disgusting. That child's mother is an angel, a goddess. Do you remember me? There was a fiesta, strings of hazelnuts, candles on window ledges. You ran away, I lost you. We made love. It's been a marvelous, haunting memory for me. I'm sorry if it's a nightmare for you. I've been looking for you for 12 years. He's my son. Just look at him. He's got your eyes. He's a lovely boy. Hebe. Jim. Hello, Silas. You know that girl you met in Italy? Is that my mother? Yes. I thought it must be. Harnessing Peacocks will be competing with the best in the world as ITV's entry for the prestigious Monte Carlo Film Festival later this year. But our producers, directors and crews found more drama closer to home in the unscripted real lives of the people of the South. I'm now going to ask Mrs. Joy uh, to open the fate for us. Mrs. Joy. And it's now two o'clock, so the 98th Bentley fate is open. the field there's a flurry of last-minute bets being placed for the famous Calpat lottery. So the basic idea is we have a 
area of the field here is split, split up into an area which is 40 yards by 24. And then each yard in that uh, square area we sell for one pound a square yard. And if the cow uses your square, then you win the, the prize, which is 250 pounds. Right. And the winner is a Mr. Nick Browning, who wins 250 pounds <laughs> and a cow pack. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There we are, 250 pounds. Good grief. Fantastic. Good Lord. Right, well, there you are. Wonderful. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Uh, I'm not sure yet. There's, a, there's an awful lot to think about it, but I won't let it change me. <laughs> as well as our weekly visit to the Hampshire village of Bentley, in our Fly on the Wall regional documentary series Ambulance, we followed the crews of the Portsmouth Main Ambulance Station as they went about their jobs saving lives. Coming up all the way. Andy. You have your eyes for me. Hello, that's it. You understand this now, can you? You're in the ambulance. You had a bit of an accident in your van. Have you ever considered doing another job? Different job? No, I don't think so. Now, I, I think this is more of a way of life than, than an actual job. Every time you, you go out on the road, you are taking part in somebody's life. And still on the subject of real-life drama, one of the world's finest actors, Sir Anthony Hopkins, took on the role of reporter to fulfil a dream that he'd had since childhood. Coming to In the second of Meridian's Atlantis network wildlife Atlantis documentary Atlantis. series, Hopkins went on safari in search of the African lion. And perhaps finding the answers to the questions that for centuries have intrigued us about the king of the beasts. Where has the lion been revered for so long? Why do we admire their ferocity? It has been a long journey. Let me tell you about it. To find out about lions, I must go out and see for myself. So, with some trepidation, I started out on foot. The rules are stay very quiet, move slowly, don't stare. And don't threaten them. You a fast runner, Frank? <laughs> when it was right to stop, we did. No bars this time. Just her and us. And if she chose, she could be on us in seconds. <laughs> she is. We've been very lucky and so close. Have a look around here. There she is. And with the wildlife camera team. I'd caught distant glimpses of male lions in the Serengeti, but nothing had prepared me for this. Good. God. Might have tangled with him. The king of the beasts, right outside the window. The king of the road, Robbie Coltrane, actor and confirmed classic car enthusiast, found the right vehicle for his considerable talents, a 1951 Cadillac Coupe convertible, which he drove across the United States in a four-part Meridian documentary series. And his adventure across America was not without incident. So it's off to another state, which reminds me of Donald Sinden's other great hit, Born to be wild, hoping for adventure. Then whatever comes our way, I don't care where you were, yippies. It's no goodbye. Oh well. Best behaviour, boys. Don't mention Vietnam. Much closer to home and travelling at a much more leisurely pace, Tom Vernon savoured the delights of the people and places of Dorset in his factual entertainment series, Fat Man Goes West. As the poet says, each man kills the thing he loves, and everyone loves Lulworth Cove. We 
forget that there was ever a time before the picture postcards, when Lulworth was a poorer but more united community, when the beaches were for local people and few enough visitors not to crowd them out of their own streets, lean on their garden walls, peer in through their sitting room windows, and generally swamp them in the quest for unspoiled beauty. When the craft that sailed into the cove were mostly fishing boats. But if we forget, there are those that remember simpler times. A fisherman, retired now, so the tourists can get at him all the time. But Jim Miller makes the best of it with a lifeboat collection box and, occasionally, a wry smile. So they used to say, I want to come to London and see the sights. There'd be old chap down here and he'd say, no, we need to go to London and see the sights. They'd come down here and see us. Well, it's right now. <laughs> it was walking pace for Debbie Thrower as she donned Wellington boots to take a stroll along the Pilgrim's Way, recreating a historic journey in the company of the Archbishop of Canterbury. We've got a good day for it, haven't we? Hello, Debbie. It's, it's a lovely day, isn't it? A wonderful day for a pilgrimage and the final stretch into Canterbury. So you enjoy walking, then? Oh, I love it. I don't really get very much time to do it, but whenever I can get into the country with my dog, I adore it. Mm. Have you ever walked the Pilgrim's Way before? No, I haven't. I think it's one thing I'll have to do, but I'll have to sort of carve out a chunk of time to do it properly. It's very easy to forget, isn't it, just how perilous those early oh, yeah. pilgrimages could well have been. Yeah, I think there are two things I'd want to make um, here. First, how dangerous they were. I mean, our idea of a pilgrimage is so sanitised, it's comfortable, it's easy, it's safe, but there's not. And the second thing is, of course, the important thing was arriving. They wanted to get there, where often we put our focus on the journey itself. D the journey is important, but for the medieval pilgrim, getting there to the place of prayer was their goal. What were your own thoughts and feelings when, at your enthronement, the point came when you were the one who was seated in that wonderful St Augustine's chair? Well, I can tell you, I felt very much like a medieval pilgrim, feeling of awe and wonder and, and excitement and trepidation at the thought of uh, being enthroned or installed at uh, this particular point, this, this seat of St. Augustine. And I remember that as I sat on, on here and faced the people with my fellow archbishops from different parts of the Anglican communion and the people out there feeling a sense of unworthiness, who am I to sit on a place like this? And feeling at the same time that no one is worthy. While the Archbishop of Canterbury reflected on a journey in history, another famous citizen of the South told reporter Joan Shenton in the series Future Perfect of his plans to sail around the world in 80 days. So what are you most looking forward to when you set out on this record-breaking trip? Just taking it on. Is it possible? That, that's the fascinating thing about this. Is it possible? Peter and I both think it is just and we want to go out and see whether it is. Curiosity again. I'm under pressure now because I'm over 50 and inevitably sometime in the future I'm not going to, I'm going to start losing physical fitness. So I've got to do the physical things now while I'm still physically strong enough to, and capable of doing them. So I'm in a hurry at the moment. You know, I look at life really quite simply. There's no repeat performance. This is it. As he battled against the elements in the southern seas, he reported his progress to viewers back home who were wishing him well. We shall be bothering with. As we literally slide down these waves, we're just a big raft with a lot of sail on it. We're doing our best to point it in one direction and keep the angle right for these waves, which are huge. He mastered the waves, but the catamaran was holed by flotsam and the epic voyage had to be abandoned. But Robin Knox Johnson doesn't give in and this very day heads back to the high seas in search of the record. This time he'll be travelling in the wake of another local hero who since September has been riding the waves in the Whitbread Round the World yacht race. Lonnie Smith from Lymington has been followed all the way by Meridian cameramen in our programme Sail the World. And when Lonnie sailed into Fremantle, Australia, having won the gruelling second leg, they were there to greet him and his victorious crew. 
Waiting for Laurie Smith was a congratulatory telegram from the Prime Minister John Major. For our Olympic and world champion Sally Gunnell, 1993 brought more victories, more medals and an OBE from Her Majesty the Queen. Once again, we saluted Brighton boxer Chris Eubank, who retained his world title after another bruising and close encounter with Nigel Benn, which went all the way to the final bell. There it is, all over. And now we've got that long wait now. And while Portsmouth missed out on a place in football's Premier League, top goal scorer Guy Whittingham, the player they bought out of the army for £400, took a step up in life signing for Aston Villa for 1.2 million. For Hampshire cricket fans, there was only one story. The retirement from the game of the inimitable David Gower. Genius, he's able to produce shots uh, that not a lot of other players can. He's able to play attacking shots that, that most ordinary players would just be very keen to defend and keep off the, out of the wicket. But along with Smith, Gunnell, Eubank, Whittingham and Gower, we paid tribute to another lesser-known local sportsman whose guts and determination put him, for me, alongside the greats. His name is Simon Gollop. He lost a leg in a motoring accident. But as we saw in our series, Local Hero, like Robin Knox Johnson, when it comes to the game of rugby, he refuses to give in. When I go onto the rugby field, I'm just one of 15 who's out there to perform for the team. The opponents don't know that I've got an artificial leg while I'm playing until they see me in the shower. Maybe if I can just help two or three people to get back on their feet, just give them the oomph they need to get going again, because that's what it takes, a little kick, and you're away. Well, in 1993, we paid tribute to a local heroine whose outstanding contribution to the world of art was often inspired by our sporting heroes, Dame Elizabeth Frink. Sadly, she passed away in April after a long and courageous fight against illness, but her life's work lives on. This final great work, a 14-foot figure of Christ resurrected, seemed a fitting piece with which to end a brilliant but also controversial career. Known always for her powerful male sculptures, this was to some extent a summation of her work, and in the final weeks of her painful illness, she seemed to hang on to complete it. On Easter Sunday, the huge statue, now cast in bronze, finally arrived at its home, the west front of Liverpool's Anglican Cathedral. Like a controversial Madonna for Salisbury Cathedral, it found its detractors, worried at the pagan strength of the image and the absence of more conventional Christian sweetness and light. Elizabeth Frink, brought up as a Catholic, always had trouble with organized religion, but her work was imbued with tremendous spiritual strength and she particularly enjoyed her church commissions. Her lifetime's devotion to figurative sculpture, often of animals, leaves an extraordinary body of work, much of it placed in the setting of her Dorset farmhouse studio. To a far greater extent than with most artists, the theme is clear, a passionate and robust concern for man's place in nature. Elizabeth Frink. And after the break, we'll be meeting the next generation of local heroes as we look back on the highlights of a year in which we shared a sense of wonder with our children. A news reporter. Why would you want to be a news reporter? Because I want to be on TV. Who else would like to be a TV presenter? Yeah! What's that? You should have left this stuff. Well, let's do it. Have a nice day.
Okay, so let's leave it all. The 106? No. Tony's flat. The Peugeot 106. Leave it all behind. What? My Tony? Neutrogena hand cream. It relieves dry, rough hands instantly and works for over eight hours. It's a fact, a clinically proven fact. And not just by men in laboratories. Neutrogena, hard-working hand cream for hard-working hands. Wouldn't you like to make more of the plants in your home? Know how to check if you're over or under watering? Make a feature of even the dullest corner. Or stop your yucca turning yucky. With Plant Magic, the secrets are yours. Each week you'll find plant profiles, practical tips and advice on choosing the right plant for the right spot, plus tips like how to prevent drying out and step-by-step -step plans for creating beautiful arrangements. Add that touch of magic around your home with Plant Magic. As the snow falls, so do C&A's prices. Some to half price. C&A's great winter sale, now on. Make it a date and pick up a bargain. Just how does Diana stay looking so perfect? For three years, Carol Ann Brown has been the princess's personal trainer. Now, starting in tomorrow's Daily Mail, she exclusively reveals a special program of simple exercises, beauty secrets, and diet tips that could help you look younger, healthier, and more vital for years to come. Plus, pick up a game card from your newsagent and play the great £100,000 Going Places holiday game. That at Body Watch by Princess Diana's personal trainer, starting tomorrow only in the Daily Mail. sale you get free fitting and free underlay love these wild colors if your windscreen fails the mot call auto windscreens anytime free get wise call the guys One of Meridian's main functions, of course, is to bring you the news, but occasionally we also make it as well. Over the past 12 months, thousands of words have been written about us, many of them actually quite kind. If I can quote to you from the Times Educational Supplement, who wrote, Meridian's three new strands for children indicate some original thinking, and adds, for older children, the eye of the storm looks like being one of the best on anybody's lineup in the new year prophetic words. With me now is Richard Cooper, who actually wrote Eye of the Storm and won yourself a splendid award, Richard. Yes, I did. To my surprise uh, and infinite pleasure, uh, this was given by the Writers Guild of Great Britain uh, in their words for the best children's drama of 1993 uh, for Eye of the Storm. And it's a tribute not to me and the scripts, but what the team made out of those scripts, the whole Meridian team and the Child's Play team working together. Fantastic experience for me, and I'm glad that they were rewarded by this at the end of the day. And we can see now exactly why you won it. Now tell me, Luke. Tell me what you see. It's empty. An emptiness. Three men waiting. Wide. Wide as the sky. What else, Luke? What else do you see? I can't look at the other one. I can't look at the swimmer. He's there. I know he's there. Look. Look into the waters, deep into the waters.
Take him. Take him. Where's the fifth? Where? It'll not be God. It must be. It must be God. Another of our children's programs to win praise was Wizardora, which was aimed to introduce preschool children to basic life skills. Do you want me to help you get that basket down? No, I'm going to put it by myself. And you lot can help me with this. Wizardy smile, wizardy frown. Point straight up and basket down. <laughs> Wizardora, you pointed down when you should have pointed up. Oh, did I? Oh, no harm done. I'll be a lot more careful when I go to stands. See you later, everyone. <laughs> Zap was an innovative, completely visual show featuring an 18-foot-high comic and was also praised as a programme specifically designed for audiences of hearing and deaf children. Meridian children are quick to learn, as we discovered in our role-swapping factual entertainment series, I Can Do That, when pupils of Winchcombe Junior School arrive for work at our studios in Newbury. Hello, I'm Bryony Farrant. Here is the news. A new law will make it compulsory for all teachers to eat school dinner. A government spokesperson said if the teachers want to dish it out, they should swallow it too. <laughs> Other good news today is that homework is to be abolished and parents are to be banned from playing computer games. And now back to Mr Fowler. Mr Fowler of Winchcombe School has agreed that any pupils turning up late will not be told off. Instead, they will receive extra tuck. There will be more news later, but... For now, from everyone on the Winchcombe Junior News team, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Glad that's over. <laughs> This, for me, is home from home, the Southampton News Studio, one of three nerve centres in Meridian's three-centre news-gathering operation. And like our colleagues at Newbury and Maidstone, we aim for an up-to-the-minute news service tailored to meet the requirements of our individual viewers. But why is Meridian unique to the ITV network? All you've got to do is turn the clock back to October the 13th and a story which affected us all in different ways. One. Zero. The time, 6 p.m. The place, Meridian's master control. This is Meridian Tonight with Debbie Thrower and David Bobin. This is Meridian Tonight with Alison Holloway and Mike Devons. This is Meridian Tonight with Andy Craig and Mike Davis. Flood alert, the south braces itself for another night of torrential rain. Floods hit the southeast, and tonight there's a warning. More rain is on the way. Floods deluge the region. Hundreds of people are evacuated. That's more than two metres above. The Southampton level. team were quick off the mark, with Martin Lowe reporting from Wiltshire. Yeah, at Tisbury, it's the worst flooding for more than 25 years. Richard Jones covered the emergency services One at work in Hampshire. For help comes into the control room of Hampshire's fire and rescue service. The car is a lost hope, but the two people inside have managed to escape. It's just the latest alert in what has been one of the service's most hectic nights since the great storms of 1987 and 1990. Over in the Meridian East region, Hugh Kirby filed his report from Sussex and Kent to Maidstone. Torrential rain. 
On one nearby farm, the potato harvest is at a standstill. A hundred thousand pounds worth lies rotting. Outside Tunbridge, the National Rivers Authority has flooded farmland to protect the town. At the from same the time, Andy Craig co-presented Meridian West's programme via a live link from Windsor to Newbury. And uh, at four o'clock this morning, I can tell you it was a very different story when our cameras arrived. Githa Hutton has been following that story all day. 48 hours of rain and this is the result. Floods on a scale not seen since 1947. At 4 a.m. the water was five foot deep in some places. The rains gushing down streets straight into people's front rooms. The River Bourne had burst its banks here just before three this morning. Firefighters arrived to help rescue people trapped in their homes. These ten-week-old twins, two of 45 people evacuated by the fire service. Boats also became the only way to get around. And with water everywhere and the gas and electricity off, in the end, more than 200 people had to be moved out of their homes and put up at the Combermere barracks. There they received hot food and drinks. One little gentleman down the road had, a, a, on a slightly lighter note, said that his, uh, his water supply had always been fairly bad. And that, uh, but tonight uh, he hadn't expected an act of God to do the plumbing for him, my. But anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. Good night from us here. Thank you, Andy, and it's good night from us here. We'll Meridian to... Tonight is ranked amongst ITV's most watched regional news programmes. Meridian's also proud of its current affairs coverage. Meridian this week, reporter director Mike Gooding, who's just returned from Bosnia, won the BT Journalist of the Year Award for his investigation into the way pensioners were exploited by an insurance salesman. His colleague Kim Duke has been shortlisted for honours at a film festival in New York for her moving report on babies in Sussex who were born blind. <laughs> Meridian also considered the plight of those suffering deafness in a program which used modern technology to facilitate a debate about a problem that affects one in six of the population. The partial or complete loss of hearing. The audience here in the studio have three ways of keeping in touch with what's going on. They can share Lord Ashley's text on the big screen or they can read the subtitles, many of which are being added live from this keyboard here our special guest tonight is Lord Ash. The same Becker. sense of caring for others was the underlying theme of our consumer series, in which viewers were invited to express their causes for concern. Tonight on Serve You Right, we unmask a drug pusher, prepared to sell hard drugs to school children. We also put personal safety devices to the test, with alarming results. And local expert Ray Fisher gives his tips on buying a used car. Many stories come to us direct from viewers by letters and phone calls to our duty office, where the staff monitor your reactions to our programmes. Amongst the favourites have been programmes that reflect aspects of everyday life in the Meridian region. Thank you very much for calling. Bye-bye. I think the forest is a really marvellous area, and I've spent most of my life in it, and I really love it. And I wouldn't wish to be anywhere else. What is the reason for that sort of ivy mm -hmm. turning to that? Oh, is it sending a few shoots out like Quite this? a lot. Yeah. Yes. All that's happened is when your ivy grows, it's naturally variegated. Sometimes it'll put out a green shoot, it reverts to what it was before. Yes. Sometimes it puts out one that's all completely the variegated colour, the creamy white in this case. No problem. Uh, but uh, I'd be inclined to snip it off because I always think it looks better when it's proper variegated yes. rather than yellow. Yes. But no the next thing that goes in is Tia Maria. This gives the bananas a rather nice chocolate taste. Well, so you don't need much in the way of liqueurs after this meal. <laughs> Well, you know, but they cure all the alcohol burns off, doesn't it? We That's know true. that. That's true. We it certainly will. And the, the greatest teetotalers can, can eat this without getting too drunk. Okay. Now... Where did you get all these flowers? Oh, my sisters. Me. My sisters have got mm -hmm. a, a mail-order business. They, they cater for women that have any above a D or a double D. Oh, because right. most of the women in my family have got 
Biggie bust. bust. I can't believe that. I know. <laughs> I know. Each time I had a baby, my bust got smaller and my feet got larger. Oh, thank you. So. <laughs> Trevor, you've been doing this job 20 or so years. Yep, I'm not going to embarrass you. Here is you, young Trevor McDonald. Look at this. On your first ITN assignment. Without the glasses, as we can see there. Do you remember what that was? I don't even remember who that is. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most uh, pleasing aspects of Meridian's first year on the air is the relationship which is developing between the company and the community in which we live. And one of the ways that works is getting people to make their own programmes. Hello, is that Meridian? I'd just like With a little help from the programme makers in our busy social action unit, viewers are invited to record their own video and telephone messages in our early morning local newspaper of the air free screen and up to the minute community service which has brought a great response from the people of the Meridian region. Send in anything and he'll broadcast it. I just thought you ought to know. Swim, swim, swim with the fishes in the sea, sea, sea. Deep down green is the only way to be, be, be. Just fishy and me. Just fishy and me. Free Screen's Missing Persons Bureau has traced eight people. On the 2nd of October, there will be the stairway. In another social action programme screened ahead of the early evening news, viewers of all ages are invited to become presenters with open access to the airwaves for their own three minutes. I'm Mrs Tobin and I'm 86. I'm Mrs Wilfred Parks and I'm 103. Tonight on Making It Happen, Mrs. Parks and Mrs. Tobin tell us why they think you should knit for Oxfam. I don't know how one gets through the day. There's not enough hours in a day for me. And because if I'm busy or upset, I pick up my knitting and I forget it all. It's like playing a game, really, that you go and enjoy it. I get such a lot of enjoyment out of it. I found that Oxfam needs the squares, and um, not only the squares, and also if they, if they don't need them, someone else have them and pay, pay, pay them to help, help raise funds for them. I mean, if it's anything going to help anybody else, well, I'm all prepared to do a little bit towards it. I can't do, we can't do a lot, but do a little bit, can't do Every little bit helps. There's been a good mix of programmes, a good variety of, of really high quality programming through the year. What's been the philosophy? Uh, the philosophy is the same as the one we wrote down when we did our application to be the broadcaster in the South. Uh, and that's that this has to be a quality company uh, with quality programmes. It's got to take on not just uh, cable and satellite and Channel 4, it's got to take on the BBC as well uh, in its own patch when the BBC has always been strong. And, and that's where we've been successful. Uh, viewers have a choice of programmes on Meridian, from an arts programme, like The Pier, uh, to a do-it-yourself programme, to a leisure programme, to a strong news programme. We've got a range of programmes, that's what viewers want, uh, and our success, if we've had it, is based on programmes. Who's watching? Uh, me. Him. Uh, us. Me. 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 Who's watching? Me. 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 Us. 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 And just before we close, there is just one story that I would like to recall from 1993. It never made the national news headlines. In fact, it ran on our local news bulletins for a mere 58 seconds. But somehow, for me, it said it all. It was all about a young Meridian viewer who, having watched television, decided that actions speak louder than words. It was pictures like these that touched Julian Jackson. After seeing the shocking scenes of the starving in Somalia, the six-year-old set up his own stall outside his home in Upton, selling toys. That was back in the spring. Now Julian has closed up his shop for the Christmas period and handed over the year's takings to the British Red Cross to help with its work in Africa. They were suffering 
and they were dying because of the wars and they were hungry and they didn't have no food. But Julian's good deed suffered a setback when a sneak thief stole the day's takings. The incident left Julian heartbroken and even more determined to help. I just, I just wouldn't give up. Just, I just wanted to help them. I just didn't want to give up. The stall is now closed, but Julian hopes to reopen in the new year. Sally Eden in Upton for Meridian Tonight. And to young Julian Jackson, and to all of you from all of us here at Meridian, a very happy and peaceful New Year. Bye-bye.